Hello everyone. This week we will continue our exploration of the world of mental disorders. We will explore schizophrenia and other psychotic disorders, such as delusional disorder, brief psychotic disorder, schizophreniform disorder, schizoaffective disorder, and substance medication-induced psychotic disorder. Schizophrenia spectrum and other psychotic disorders, are defined by abnormalities, in one or more of the following five domains, delusions, hallucinations, disorganized thinking, speech, grossly disorganized, or abnormal motor behavior, including catatonia, and negative symptoms. Delusions. Delusions are fixed beliefs, that are not amenable to change in light of conflicting evidence. Examples of persecutory delusion are beliefs, that one is going to be harmed, harassed, and so forth by an individual, organization, or other group. They are most common. Referential delusions are beliefs that certain gestures, comments, environmental cues, and so forth are directed at oneself. These are also common. Grandiose delusions happen when an individual believes that he or she has exceptional abilities, wealth, or fame. Erotomanic delusions are those, when an individual believes falsely that another person is in love with him or her. Nihilistic delusions, involve the conviction that a major catastrophe will occur, while somatic delusions, focus on preoccupations regarding health and organ function. Delusions are considered bizarre, if they are clearly implausible, and not understandable to same culture peers, and do not derive from ordinary life experiences. For example, I recently worked with a 12-year-old girl who believed that she grew up with Santa Claus on the Northern Pole. Hallucinations. Hallucinations, are perception-like experiences, that occur without an external stimulus. They are vivid and clear, with the full force and impact of normal perceptions, and not under voluntary control. They may occur in any sensory modality. Auditory hallucinations, however, are the most common in schizophrenia and related disorders. Auditory hallucinations are usually experienced as voices. They can be familiar or unfamiliar. These voices, are perceived as distinct from the individual's own thoughts. The hallucinations must occur in the context of a clear sensorium. The hallucinations that occur while falling asleep are called hypnagogic. The hallucinations that occur while waking up are called hypnopompic. Hypnagogic and hypnopompic hallucinations are considered to be within the range of normal experience. Hallucinations may be a normal part of religious experience, in certain cultural contexts. Disorganized thinking. Disorganized thinking, or formal thought disorder, is typically inferred from the individual's speech. The individual may switch from one topic to another. This is called derailment or loose associations. Individuals can have the tangential speech, when answers to questions are obliquely related, or completely unrelated. Rarely, speech may be so severely disorganized, that it is nearly incomprehensible, and resembles receptive aphasia in its linguistic disorganization. This is also called incoherence or word salad. Because mildly disorganized speech is common and nonspecific, the symptom must be severe enough to substantially impair effective communication. The severity of the impairment may be difficult to evaluate if the person making the diagnosis comes from a different linguistic background than that of the person being examined. Less severe disorganized thinking or speech may occur during the prodromal and residual periods of schizophrenia. Grossly disorganized or abnormal motor behavior may manifest itself in a variety of ways. It can range from childlike silliness to unpredictable agitation. Problems may be noted in any form of goal-directed behavior, leading to difficulties in performing activities of daily living. Catatonic behavior is a marked decrease in reactivity to the environment. This can include the resistance to instructions, or negativism. A person can also maintain a rigid, inappropriate, or bizarre posture. A person can show mutism and stupor, which is a complete lack of verbal and motor responses. It can also include the catatonic excitement which is a purposeless and excessive motor activity that does not appear to have an obvious cause. Other features are, repeated stereotyped movements, staring grimacing, mutism, and the echoing of speech. Although catatonia has historically been associated with schizophrenia, catatonic symptoms are nonspecific. They may occur in other mental disorders, such as bipolar or depressive disorders with catatonia, as well as in, in medical conditions, like, for example, the catatonic disorder due to another medical condition. Negative symptoms. Negative symptoms, account for a substantial portion of the morbidity, associated with schizophrenia, but are less prominent in other psychotic disorders. Two negative symptoms are particularly prominent in schizophrenia, diminished emotional expression and abolition. Diminished emotional expression, includes reductions in the expression of emotions in the face, eye contact, and inanition of speech. In addition, there is a reduction in movements of the hand, 
head, and face, that normally give an emotional emphasis to speech. Avolition is a decrease in motivated, self-initiated, purposeful activities. The individual may sit for long periods of time, and show little interest in participating in work or social activities. Other negative symptoms include allergia, anhedonia, and asociality. Allergia, is manifested by diminished speech output. Anhedonia, is the decreased ability, to experience pleasure from positive stimuli, or a degradation in the recollection of pleasure, previously experienced. Asociality, refers to the apparent lack of interest, in social interactions and may be associated with abolition. It can also be a manifestation of limited opportunities for social interactions. Schizophrenia spectrum. Clinicians should first consider conditions, that do not reach full criteria for a psychotic disorder, and conditions that are limited to one domain of psychopathology. Then, they should consider time-limited conditions. Finally, the diagnosis of a schizophrenia spectrum disorder, requires the exclusion of another condition, that may give rise to psychosis. Two conditions are defined by abnormalities limited to one domain of psychosis, delusions or catatonia. Delusional disorder, is characterized by at least one month of delusions, but no other psychotic symptoms. Catatonia is defined by the presence of three or more of twelve psychomotor features, such as stupor, catalepsy, waxy flexibility, negativism etc. Brief psychotic disorder lasts more than one day and remits by one month. Two disorders, closely resemble schizophrenia, but are distinguished by the number of months, a person has symptoms, or by their characteristics. Schizophreniform disorder, and schizoaffective disorder, are similar to schizophrenia, but differ in their duration. The episode lasts between one month and six months in those with schizophreniform disorder, after which, the individual may or may not recover. Schizoaffective disorder, is a combination of the positive, negative, and disorganized symptoms of schizophrenia, along with the presence of intermittent major depressive episodes, manic mood episodes, or both. Schizophrenia lasts for at least six months, and includes at least one month, of active phase symptoms. In schizoaffective disorder, a mood episode, and the active phase symptoms of schizophrenia, occur together and were preceded, or are followed by, at least two weeks of delusions, or hallucinations without prominent mood symptoms. Psychotic disorders may be induced by another condition. In substance or medication-induced psychotic disorder, the psychotic symptoms are judged to be a physiological consequence of a drug of abuse. In psychotic disorder due to another medical condition, the psychotic symptoms, are judged to be a direct physiological consequence of another medical condition. Catatonia can occur in several disorders, including neurodevelopmental, psychotic, bipolar, depressive, and other mental disorders. Schizophrenia is a chronic mental illness. It affects about 1% of the population, although the condition's exact prevalence is hard to obtain. The three phases of schizophrenia include prodromal, active and residual phases. Prodromal stage. This early stage is often not recognized until after the illness has progressed. The first signs and symptoms of schizophrenia may be overlooked, because they're common to many other conditions, such as depression. It's often not until schizophrenia has advanced to the active phase that the prodromal phase is recognized and diagnosed. Symptoms in prodromal phase may include, withdrawal from social life or family activities, isolation, increased anxiety, difficulty concentrating or paying attention, and lack of motivation. In addition, people may be struggling to make decisions, forgetting or neglecting personal hygiene, have sleep disturbances and increased irritability. Active stage. At this phase of schizophrenia, the symptoms may be the most obvious. Yet research suggests by the time a person is at this phase, they may have been showing symptoms of prodromal schizophrenia for approximately two years. Symptoms include, hallucinations or seeing people or things no one else does, paranoid delusions, confused and disorganized thoughts, disordered speech, changes to motor behavior, lack of eye contact, and flat effect. Residual phase. While no longer used in diagnosing, some clinicians may still describe this phase, when discussing symptoms, and the progression of schizophrenia. Symptoms in this phase of the illness, resemble symptoms in the first phase. They're characterized by low energy, and the lack of motivation. But some elements of the active phase remain. Some people may also relapse back to the active phase. Diagnostic Criteria for Schizophrenia Criterion A Two or more of the five symptoms, including delusions, hallucinations, disorganized speech, grossly disorganized or catatonic behavior and negative symptoms, should be present. Symptoms should be present for a significant portion of time, during a one-month period. 
The length of symptoms can be shorter if a person receives the successful treatment. At least one of these symptoms must be delusion, hallucinations, or disorganized speech. Criterion B deals with significantly disturbed functioning across school, work, relationships with other people and self-care. When schizophrenia starts during childhood or adolescence, we can observe the failure to achieve expected level of interpersonal, academic, or occupational functioning. Criterion C continuous signs of the disturbance persist for at least six months. This six-month period must include at least one month of Criterion A, active phase symptoms. Criterion C may include periods of prodromal or residual symptoms. During these prodromal or residual periods, the signs of the disturbance may be manifested by only negative symptoms or by two or more symptoms listed in Criterion A that appear in an attenuated form. A person can have, for example, odd beliefs or have unusual perceptual experiences. Criterion D schizoaffective disorder depressive, or bipolar disorder with psychotic features, have been ruled out based on one. No major depressive or manic episodes have occurred concurrently with the active phase symptoms. Or two, if mood episodes have occurred during active phase symptoms, they have been present for a minority of the total duration of the active and residual periods of the illness. Criterion E. The disturbance is not attributable to the physiological effects of drugs, medication, or another medical condition. Criterion F. If there is a history of autism spectrum disorder, or a communication disorder, that began in the childhood, the additional diagnosis of schizophrenia, is made only if prominent delusions or hallucinations, in addition to the other required symptoms of schizophrenia, are also present for at least one month. Delusional disorder. The main feature of this disorder is the presence of delusions, which are unshakable beliefs in something untrue. People with delusional disorder, experience non-bizarre delusions, which involve situations that could occur in real life, such as being followed, poisoned, deceived, conspired against, or loved from a distance. These delusions usually involve the misinterpretation of perceptions or experiences. In reality, however, the situations are either not true at all or highly exaggerated. People with delusional disorder often can continue to socialize and function quite normally, apart from the subject of their delusion, and generally do not behave in an obviously odd or bizarre manner. What causes delusional disorder? The fact that delusional disorder is more common in people who have family members with delusional disorder or schizophrenia suggests there might be a genetic factor involved. Evidence suggests that delusional disorder can be triggered by stress. Alcohol and drug abuse also might contribute to the condition. People who tend to be isolated, such as immigrants or those with poor sight and hearing, appear to be more vulnerable to developing delusional disorder. Diagnostic Criteria for Delusional Disorder Criterion A. The presence of one, or more, delusions with a duration of one month or longer. Criterion B. Criterion A for schizophrenia has never been met. If there are hallucinations, they are not prominent, and are related to the delusional theme. For example, the sensation of being infested with insects is associated with delusions of infestation. Criterion C. Apart from the impact of the delusion or its ramifications, functioning is not markedly impaired, and behavior is not obviously bizarre or odd. Criterion D. If manic, or major depressive episodes have occurred, these have been brief, relative to the duration of the delusional periods. Criterion E. The disturbance is not attributable to the physiological effects of drugs, medication, or another medical condition. Brief Psychotic Disorder. Brief psychotic disorder is a sudden, short-term display of psychotic behavior, such as hallucinations or delusions, which occurs with a stressful event. Causes. Brief psychotic disorder is triggered by extreme stress, such as a traumatic accident or loss of a loved one. It is followed by a return to the previous level of function. The person may, or may not be aware of the strange behavior. This condition, most often affects people in their 20s, 30s and 40s. Those who have personality disorders, are at high risk of having a brief reactive psychosis. Diagnostic Criteria for Brief Psychotic Disorder Criterion A. One or more of the four symptoms, including delusions, hallucinations, disorganized speech, and grossly disorganized or catatonic behavior, should be present. At least one of these symptoms must be delusion, hallucinations, or disorganized speech. Criterion B. Duration of an episode of the disturbance is at least one day, but less than one month, with eventual full return to premorbid level of functioning. Criterion C. 
the disturbance is not better explained by major depressive, or bipolar disorder with psychotic features, or another psychotic disorder, such as schizophrenia or catatonia. Also, the disturbance is not attributable to the physiological effects of drugs, medication, or another medical condition. What is schizophreniform disorder? Schizophreniform disorder is a type of psychotic illness with symptoms that are similar to those of schizophrenia, but lasting for less than six months. Like schizophrenia, schizophreniform disorder is a type of psychosis. A person often cannot tell what is real from what is imagined. It also affects how people think, act, express emotions, and relate to others. If symptoms last longer than six months, doctors consider the person to have schizophrenia, rather than schizophreniform disorder. Diagnostic Criteria for Schizophreniform Disorder Criterion A. Two or more of the five symptoms, including delusions, hallucinations, disorganized speech, grossly disorganized or catatonic behavior and negative symptoms, should be present. Symptoms should be present for a significant portion of time, during a one-month period. The length of symptoms can be shorter if a person receives the successful treatment. At least one of these symptoms must be delusion, hallucinations, or disorganized speech. Criterion B. An episode of the disorder lasts at least one month but less than six months. When the diagnosis must be made without waiting for recovery, it should be qualified as provisional. Criterion C. Schizoaffective disorder, depressive, or bipolar disorder with psychotic features, have been ruled out based on one. No major depressive or manic episodes have occurred concurrently with the active phase symptoms. Or two. If mood episodes have occurred during active phase symptoms, they have been present for a minority of the total duration of the active and residual periods of the illness. Criterion D. The disturbance is not attributable to the physiological effects of drugs, medication, or another medical condition. Schizoaffective disorder. Schizoaffective disorder is a mental health disorder that is marked by a combination of schizophrenia symptoms, such as hallucinations or delusions, and mood disorder symptoms, such as depression or mania. There are two types of schizoaffective disorder and each of them includes some symptoms of schizophrenia. The first one is bipolar type. It includes episodes of mania and sometimes major depression. The other type is depressive type. It includes only major depressive episodes. Schizoaffective disorder may run a unique course in each affected person. Diagnostic Criteria for Schizoaffective Disorder Criterion A. An uninterrupted period of illness, during which there is a major depressive or manic episode, which is concurrent with Criterion A of schizophrenia. The major depressive episode must include Criterion A1, depressed mood. Criterion B. Delusions or hallucinations, for two or more weeks, in the absence of a major mood depressive or manic episode, during the lifetime duration of the illness. Criterion C. Symptoms that meet criteria for a major mood episode are present for the majority of the total duration of the active and residual portions of the illness. Criterion D. The disturbance is not attributable to the effects of a substance, for example, the drug of abuse, a medication, or another medical condition. Substance or medication induced psychotic disorder is characterized by hallucinations or delusions due to the direct effects of a substance or withdrawal from a substance, in the absence of delirium. Many substances can cause the disorder, including alcohol, amphetamines, cannabis, cocaine, hallucinogens, opioids, fencyclidine, sedatives, and hypnotics. To be considered substance-induced psychosis, the hallucinations and delusions should be in excess of those that typically accompany simple substance intoxication or withdrawal, although the patient may also be intoxicated or withdrawing. Symptoms are often brief, resolving shortly after the causative drug is cleared. However, psychosis triggered by amphetamines, cocaine, or fencyclidine may persist for many weeks. Because some young people with prodromal, or early-stage schizophrenia, use substances that can induce psychosis, it is important to obtain a thorough history, particularly to seek evidence of prior mental symptoms, before concluding that acute psychosis is due to substance use. Diagnostic Criteria for Substance or Medication-Induced Psychotic Disorder Criterion A. Presence of delusions and, or, hallucinations. Criterion B. There is evidence from the history, physical examination, or laboratory findings of both 1 and 2. 1. The symptoms in criterion are developed during or soon after substance intoxication or withdrawal or after exposure to a medication. 
2. The involved substance is capable of producing the symptoms in criterion A. Criterion C. The disturbance is not better explained by a psychotic disorder that is not substance or medication induced. Some people will have symptoms prior to substance or medication. Other people will continue to have symptoms long after the withdrawal or intoxication. You can also check whether client has a history of recurrent non-substance related episodes. Criterion D. The disturbance does not occur exclusively during the course of a delirium. Criterion E. The disturbance causes clinically significant distress or impairment in social, occupational, or other important areas of functioning. This week I encourage you to watch the video on schizophrenia. The video features interviews and expert comments on the disorder. In addition, I will be posting discussion board questions that will be directly related to the video and the lecture. Finally, please read the assigned readings for this week.